Hey guys, just wanted to share something with you that's on my heart. Something I've been thinking about and yes, I am driving. No, I'm not looking at the video camera. I'm just holding it um, on the gear shift. So, don't worry about me. I'm not going to look. Um, I just want to talk. Which, by the way, hopefully I'll try to keep it short and sweet because I have been drinking coffee today. And when I drink coffee, I talk a lot. So, um, I've been thinking about forgiveness a lot lately and how we're supposed to forgive people and how Jesus said that if we don't forgive others, then we won't be forgiven either. And Jesus told a story about a slave who owed his master a lot of money and the master was going to sell him or his family or something like that to pay the debt. And so the slave begged his master, please, please forgive me. Just be patient with me and I'll pay back everything I owe. So the master forgave him for his debt. Well then, as soon as his master had forgiven him his debt, he went out and found somebody who owed him some money. But it was a very small fraction of what he had owed that he had been forgiven. He found the person who owed him some money and basically started pretty much like choking him or something, I uh, forget exactly all the details, but um, just saying, trying to get this guy to pay him what he owed, and he was being totally unmerciful to the person, and his master found out about it, and um, got really mad and said, you wicked slave, I forgave you all this, and then you go and, you know, get mad about somebody owing you this tiny amount? When you owed all this and I forgave it to you, I forgave it. Um, so, it just kind of hit home for me just a few minutes ago because I was listening to K-Love, which is one of my favorite radio stations. And um, a song came on the radio that was about how we are the thorn Um, 
those people. And I've just kind of been talking to God and saying things kind of along the line of, you know, how am I supposed to forgive this person who has betrayed me so much? And how am I supposed to forgive that? How am I supposed to still have boundaries, you know, like without letting this person hurt me again while still forgiving them, you know? And I've been praying to God, I can't forgive this person. I can't, you know, I need you to help me do it because I can't. And then that song came on <coughs> and it just made me think about how much I have betrayed Jesus and how many times I've betrayed him and how much he still loves me anyway even though I've betrayed him so many times and like this person betrayed me and I'm having trouble forgiving though I've been forgiven so much more, you know, I've been forgiven by my Savior who died for me, even though I've betrayed him so many times in my life through the things I did and the things I said and just the way I lived my life, and that was just, I don't know, it really hit home, <coughs> and maybe that'll help me forgive, I hope. It's still very hard. It's hard to forgive somebody when they betrayed you, you know. But maybe it makes it a little easier when we think about how much God loves us and um, how many times we've betrayed Him, yet He forgives us anyway and still loves us anyway and gives us chance after chance after chance. His mercies are new every single morning. Every single morning. The Bible says His mercies are new every morning. <coughs> we're supposed to be like that. Like Jesus said that if we don't forgive, we will not be forgiven. And it's it's so hard to forgive people when they betray you, especially when they do it over and over. Even just one time though, it's still hard um, to forgive, but he forgives us. So that's why we are supposed to forgive because we've been forgiven so much. So I hope that helps somebody out there. <coughs> Because um, it's pretty heavy to think about the fact that if we don't forgive, God will not forgive us. That's pretty heavy. I want to be forgiven. I don't know about you, but um, even if you don't believe in God, I would advise you and recommend for you to think about it this way. If God is not real, then you know, you're okay that you don't believe in him. But if he is real and you're living like you're living and you don't believe in him, then when your life is over, you have everything to lose. Your eternity is at stake. Eternity. And just think about for a second how long your life has been so far. And then try to think about that amount of time, that time span, multiplied by infinity. Like, it's so hard to even think about or to comprehend. It's mind-boggling. So that is what is at stake. I don't know about you, but I would much rather take the chance uh, because if I'm right and God does exist, which I know I am right about that, um, if I'm right and God exists, then when my life is over and I've lived my life for Him and, you know, in pursuit of Him and I've lost nothing, and I've gained everything, because if I'm right, then there is a heaven waiting for me after I die, and an eternity with Jesus in heaven, eternity with God, in God's presence, just walking on streets of gold, and being happy every single day, all day, no pain, no tears, no heartache ever again, as long as I live. If I'm right, that's what comes after I die. But if I'm wrong and God doesn't exist, then I have lost nothing by believing in Him, by serving Him, you know, by living my life for Him. I've lost nothing if I'm wrong. But I've gained everything. I've gained heaven in, or eternity in heaven. So, 
that's something for you to think about if you don't believe in God and the things I'm saying to you don't matter and you think that it doesn't matter if you hold a grudge or not I would think about that because I don't know about you but I want to spend my eternity in a good place <laughs> um, but that's not even what it's all about even though that's what I'm talking about that's not the main focus of it all like the main reason why I talk about God and talk about Jesus is because He's changed my life so much for the better and I've been through so much <laughs> and I can look back on my life and see how much God was there. I can see His hand in everything in my life from the time I was a child actually. I got saved when I was six years old and I didn't always live right, um, and when I got older, became an adult, I definitely didn't always live right, <laughs> and usually didn't live right, um, even though I tried and stuff, it was just too much going on <laughs> in my life, and I just drifted away, and I fell into temptation and sin and things like that. But I can look back and see how he's worked everything in my life together for the good, for my good. And I can see how he's had his hand in everything I've done as far as leading me, you know, even through my trials, and even through my times of going through sinful stages, you know, and doing things I shouldn't be doing. He still had his hand on me. Um, he still cared. He still loved me. And he was still trying to bring me back to where I needed to be. And he ultimately worked everything out to where I would be exactly where he wanted me to be. And that's pretty awesome to me. And it really shows me that God definitely exists. And because there's no way that he could turn everything, that, you know, that things could work out the way they have in my life. And just work together so perfectly. Um, if there wasn't a God, because I've been in some messes. I've gotten myself into a lot of messes when I was trying to live my own way. And still, I can look back and see how he turned those mistakes and the bad times, the trials, and the hard stuff. He turned it all around and brought good out of it. Everything. The, even the worst things I've ever been through, God has brought good out of those things. And that's why I know he's real. One of the reasons. <laughs> Plus, you can just look around and see. All creation proclaims there is a God. But anyway, I'm talking too much and losing my train of thought. <laughs> um, so anyway, I hope that uh, helps somebody out there. And I hope you guys are enjoying this beautiful day.